How's uh, what, what's a day like for you right now? It's different. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, it takes a couple days to get used to, but now working from home, it seems like the norm, you know, I've been doing it for whatever, three weeks now. So I've gotten in pretty good rhythm trying to keep normal office hours and, you know, double bolting the door so nobody can get in for me. But um, I've got a good setup. I've still got all my film and, and we're able to meet with the staff on Zoom. So we're trying to keep a business as usual. Are you meeting with uh, potential draft picks on Zoom as well? Or, or how are you reaching out to guys, uh, to college guys right now? So we're allowed to meet with a prospect three times a week for one hour each stint. And so oftentimes our position coaches are responsible for meeting with those guys. Um, I, I've been calling a lot of coaches around the, the college level, trying to get more information on some of these players and, and occasionally talking with the players. But for the most part, that's been position coaches. Okay. Um, I, I noticed uh, what you did with, with City Gospel Mission, the, the very generous check that, that you wrote them and sort of what you provided for them. Um, you know, why was that important for you and, and your wife and your family to, to sort of reach out? And, and yeah, well, we, we know that there's a lot of people that are affected in a lot of different ways by what's going on right now. And City Gospel Mission is an organization that, that we came across in the fall. Um, some of our players have worked there in the past. And so they just made a really strong impression on us. And we felt the need to, to help them as best we can because we know that they're, um, I don't know if stress is the right word, but certainly they're taking on a lot of responsibility right now with a lot of people that need help. And so we just wanted to reach out and see how we could help. And um, again, great organization. And they, they were they were open to however we could help them. And hopefully, you know, by just getting it out there, more people can can help them in whatever way is possible, just in the toiletries or, or magazines or, or financially, whatever it is that, that people are called on to help. Uh, we just felt it was important for us to do. Can you imagine if this would have been the situation when you were trying to get drafted? No, maybe it would help me get drafted. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it would have been a challenge. It would have been um, a lot of boring days sitting in my duplex in Lincoln, Nebraska, I would imagine, with my roommates. Um, but certainly a challenge. You know, it's really – it's the biggest challenge is for the guys who didn't go to the combine or were injured and, and were waiting for, a, you know, a late March or early April pro day to be able to showcase their skills for the one and only time. Those are the guys that it really – really hinders right now is there any way to sort of I mean is anyone sending you guys or, or coaches tape or anything to evaluate at this point or is it just is there are people doing pro days in their backyard yeah you get you get some tape from some community fields or high school fields um, guys out there by themselves maybe with one other person filming it uh, you get plenty of that right now okay um you guys tagged AJ Green and I guess I'm sort of wondering what this situation does for a long-term contract for him. Does, if, if there's no opportunity, and I guess we don't know at this point what the opportunity will be, but if there's no opportunity to see him on the field and, and do something, it, does that sort of uh, change what this team is thinking about for A.J. long-term? Well, we're not there yet. You know, we still have till July 15th. So for us and AJ, you just take it week to week right now and, and see what the next week holds. But uh, we're not pressed up against the gun at this point. So uh, we're not going to worry about that yet. But th certainly there will come a time where that, that becomes critical. But right now, um, our, our next step is just seeing when the offseason program is going to start in some way, shape, or form, virtually or physically. Um, but again, we're just, we're just happy that AJ is going to be in the fold for next year. And, uh, excited to see him on the field. Uh, I know talking about free agency is, is a little tenuous just because the, the, you know, the T's aren't crossed and the I's aren't dotted, but just sort of the, the, the stance that fans have seen from this team so far in, in just what's in the news, it's a more aggressive approach to free agency than I think a lot of people are used to without naming names or, or talking about individual players was this approach as aggressive as you want it to be or just uh, kind of uh, take the temperature on, on what you guys were planning on doing free agency wise and sort of how it looks now? Yeah, it's not a surprise at all uh, for me, just based on the conversation since I've walked in the door with, um, with ownership, with Duke Tobin and his staff, everyone's been on the same page every step of the way. 
And so I know people like to talk about how things have been done in the past, but um, that's not what I've seen. I've seen a bunch of people on the same page, all trying to win. Uh, all the things that we talked about after the season ended, uh, we went out and attacked and addressed, and um, we all feel really good about it. And, and most importantly, is just talking to the players throughout this process, how, how excited guys were to come to Cincinnati. And it felt like we were really um, on the verge of doing something special. There's a lot of work to do, but, but guys certainly uh, were buying into that, excited about it. And there's just a lot of good energy around the building right now. So to speak, because, you know, so you're at your house. Yeah. <laughs> There's good energy in my house, but <laughs> I came here, it was, it was good times in the building. Uh, do you remember when, when Joe Burrow first came on your sort of radar, your periphery? I know you and Coach Solich were kind of ships in the night at Nebraska. Yeah. But do you remember first hearing about Joe, or, or when was that? Was, was he at LSU at that time? They would have, uh, I'm sure I heard about it when he was going through the UC LSU um, you know, he was trying to find out where to go just because I had left uh, UC just before that. And so his name was probably on my – I knew his dad. His dad and I, again, never worked together, but we used to cross paths when I was recruiting for Cincinnati. Um, and I knew he had a Nebraska background and his other sons played in Nebraska. So we would always chat in the halls. At that time, I was not aware he had a son named Joe who was a pretty good prospect. I did not know that. Uh, but I, I bet when he was trying to figure out what schools to go to is the first time I heard that. Um, and obviously um, been aware of him since he's been at LSU. As a head coach, what's maybe the one thing you wish you could do right now that you can't, as opposed to, you know, taking everything into account, working with the guys you currently have, evaluating for the draft the way you typically would, what would be sort of the one thing you wish you could do that you can't right now? Well, stay on the road and get a chance to interact with some guys maybe you didn't feel like you knew as well um, or had a good feel for. That's, that's one thing that, again, everyone's facing the same challenge, so it's, it's, it's not a negative per se, but um, that's the part that's fun for me is to get out there on the road and get a chance to see these guys work out live, interact with them one more time if you, you maybe hadn't interacted with them at the combine. So um, that's the part that you just got to replicate sometime with FaceTime calls and Zoom calls with these prospects and try to get to know them in that sense. If, if the NFL came to you and asked what, what day do we have to – all systems go for the season to start on time. How, what day do you think that would be? I mean, how late can we go here and still start the season on time? That's a great question. Um, you know, it's right now our, our focus, I, I don't worry so much about that in this moment. I worry about when is the off season program going to start because we got to be prepared for that. Um, it's going to look differently probably than it has in years past. And so that's, that's going to be different for us. I don't care if you've coached for nine years or 30 years, this off season will be different than it has in years past. And so really all my time and energy is spent on how do we make this creative? How do we get the work done that we would otherwise get done in an auditorium as we're speaking to our players and on the field, teaching them concepts? We're not, we might not have as much of that as we're used to. And so, um, again, all my time and energy and in the, in the time of my staff right now is just trying to find ways to be creative and get the most out of this time as we can. Can you envision a scenario? I mean, can you wrap your head? I know you're thinking day-to-day and off-season program, but can you imagine a scenario playing in front of no one this fall? I think you have to be able to accept all, all possibilities. Uh, that's not what anybody wants. Uh, obviously, we hope that things get much better quickly so we don't have to entertain that possibility. But um, I, I don't think anybody can say with confidence in any one way or another what's going to happen, you know, past next week, past a month from now. and so. Again, I, I think it's best for us just to think week to week at this point. Now, I know your son went as you for Halloween last year. <laughs> yeah. So has there been an opportunity for you to maybe unlatch the door? Has he been watching film at all? Is he, is he doing more with dad now that, uh, yeah. now that you guys are in the same house? No, you're right about that. He does. He, um, he's really in both my sons. Uh, Brooks is nine and Luke is seven. They both really got into football cards. You know, that's something that we can do right now. I order some cards and they go through. And, and so we found a batch where it's a bunch of draft prospects. Um, so they're really getting to know all these guys. And so uh, my oldest son, Brooks, will pop up sometimes as I'm watching tape and he'll ask who it is and where they're from. And um, so you're going to take him? You're going to take him? And I'm like, Brooke, it doesn't work like that. You know, it's, you got to watch all these guys because you don't know who's going to be available at the right time. And, uh, but that part has been really fun. Now, that's a good question because – um, I've, I've tried to involve him as much as I can, and he, he really, um, 
I, I asked him last night. He watches games on you. He'll go it on YouTube and he'll he'll YouTube uh, best catches of 2019 or something. He'll just watch them all. And I said, let's watch a Bengals game. Let's watch the the Browns game from the last game of the season. He said, Dad, I've already seen that like 20 times. And I said, okay, well, who scored all the touchdowns? I mean, he went Browns and Bengals right right in a row, exactly how they all happened. So it's been fun getting to spend more time with my kids in that way and. And uh, I think they, they've enjoyed being around me a little bit more. And sometimes we talk football and, and they enjoy that as well. But to be clear, your son having a, a card of a guy doesn't necessarily tip your hand in terms of no. draft. <laughs> no, not at all. No. All right, Zach, I appreciate you taking some time. We'll look forward to good. seeing you soon and, and good luck with everything in the process. Thank you very much. Yep. It's fun having fun being on here. Thanks, Coach.